So, Kat Dewey, congratulations on your Emmy nomination for hosting So You Think You Can Dance. Uh, were you up early that morning to watch the announcement? <laughs> I actually was I wasn't awake. I hadn't, I hadn't actually planned on getting up or anything like that. And actually, I hadn't even talked to my manager or my publicist because I was a bit nervous because I'd been nominated twice before and I thought, there's no way I'm gonna, it's going to happen again. But I was lucky because my husband was in England at the time, so he was way ahead of New York. So in the end, he called me and went, ha-ha, you're in. Who's a clever wife then? And then that was it. That was how I found out. So it was actually quite a nice way to wake up. So, as you mentioned, this is your third nomination now for the show, third nomination in a row. Uh, was it different finding out this time around that you were nominated as opposed to the first two experiences? Uh, it was definitely different from the first time, because the first time I never expected at all. And then the this, this second and third time, you're always thinking, oh, will I be? Won't I be? You never quite know. So there's a, it's, it's a very different feeling. There's almost a feeling of relief to go, oh, I'm, I must still be doing an okay job then, you know, the second or the third time you go into it. But um, you know what, it's one of those things where I'm absolutely delighted. It, it, I, I couldn't be more thrilled. It's so exciting. Um, but really, I think the, the thing that's really changed my life is the actual show, you know, doing the show for 10 seasons um, has totally changed my life, you know. It, 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 the Emmy nomination is something I will always remember and it, and it will always be there and I will always tell stories about it and, and say how excited I was and how lovely it was to be recognized. But in actual fact, doing the show for 10 seasons is what's actually changed my life in a fabulous way. I love living here in America. Um, I, love, I love the culture. I love Americans. I love their positivity. I love the fact that we're still going. That's down to the audience at home, you know, 10 seasons. I came over here seven years ago and, you know, you, you hope that a show is going to be successful. You, you kind of turn around and go, I love this show, fingers crossed, I'll work really hard and I'll, I'll try re really hard and I'll do everything in my power to make it, make it happen. But you never know, it's always down to the audience, you know, it depends on whether you get the ratings or not. And, and thankfully, touch wood, our audience is still loving the show, so well, they still love it, we'll keep giving it to them. Yeah, ten seasons uh, on, as as you mentioned, it's it's a pretty uh, long and impressive run for for any show on TV. Uh, what 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 is the biggest change that you would say that this this show has had the biggest effect it's had on your life? I'm getting older. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's saying, "Oh my God, it's season ten. I'm like, "Yeah, with double figures." I said, "I want to head into treble figures. That's what I want to do." Can you imagine the hundredth season of So You Think You Could? We did start doing doubles now before I die. They can just wheel me out on a on a on a wheelchair and welcome your host, Kat Dealey, and I'll be like this batty old lady with squiffy lipstick. That's why I'm wanna do. Um, you know what? I think what's happened with the show is in terms of the dancers, they've really changed. They're not just dancers anymore, they're athletes. You know, it's not enough to just be able to do ballroom, it's not enough to just be able to do hip hop. You've gotta be able to do everything. And it's and it's to a level now that is beyond, you know, what it was five years ago. They are absolutely, they're built like Greek gods and goddesses. They're ripped, they've got abs, they've got guns. They, they, could, they could challenge any athlete. Now, uh, seven nominations for the show overall this year, uh, and it's been on the air since 2005, but it seems like it, it's been catching on more and more. Like the last couple of years, it's gotten in for, for uh, reality uh, competition series as well uh, that, that it didn't get in its early years. Is that the impression you've gotten in recent years that the show seems to be even growing in popularity as it goes along? I think the thing with our show, actually, and, and, and that was one of the things when we approached the auditions, I always approach them with a little trepidation because you turn around and go, are we going to be able to find these people again, these people with great personalities and a sense of humor and stories and above all, dance talent. And when you approach them, you kind of go, oh, I just don't know. I don't know if we're going to find them this year. And then when they start coming in and you're like, yeah, they're here. And, and actually, the interesting thing this year was a lot of these kids who are on the stage this season have been watching the show since they were nine, you know? And so this is, which means that we're still relevant within the dance community too. So while we're still relevant within the dance community, we'll continue to find the talent. And then in terms of the audience and popularity, I think that, weirdly, I think the fact that we're a niche show is what is what made us 
not go to those astronomical figures of idol, you know, because not everybody's into dancing. Is so niche. It's such a uh, it's, it's completely its own genre. Don't get me wrong. There are quite often audience members that you would think would never be into dance, but somehow are. But the thing is, is that that core audience that we have are so passionate about it that they stay with us and stay with us and stay with us. So the very thing that kind of made us not go astronomical figures in terms of being the the TV machine that Idol was, I think it will be, will lead actually to our longevity because our our numbers haven't really dipped. You know, there's been a slight dip, but it's it's nothing in comparison to other shows on TV. One of the things that I think probably separates uh, your show from from singing competitions like Idol and The Voice is that you know in the music industry you know you have technology auto tune that you know can take an okay voice and turn it into like a, a Billboard chart hit. But in mm -hmm. terms of dance, you know, there's no auto tune for your legs, so basically it, it has to be all there on the stage. Do you think that's the case? Absolutely, and I and I think we're we're also now as an audience very aware of all those tricks of the trade. You know. We know all of those things. We know that you can auto-tune. We know that someone can lip-sync. They don't have to do a live performance. We know that we can put them in a video and stick amazing dancers around them, and they don't really have to dance. Or they can have a body double, or they'll get airbrushed, or whatever it is. We know all of those things. But with a dancer, they absolutely have to be able to deliver. And I think what we've done is we've elevated them to a position where they are the stars of the show. You know, these kids go on tour after they've finished, and there's 5,000 people in an auditorium screaming their name. That doesn't really happen to dancers. They're normally the backup people. They're the team players. They're the, you know, they're the, they're the, they're the icing on the cake. They have to work really hard, but they don't get the recognition. And I think that this show has been responsible for dancers get, getting recognition. I mean, we were doing the TCAs this morning, and even Travis said this morning, he said, I've never known anything like walking out onto a stage and people screaming my name like that. And he was like, the tour was definitely the time of my life, which is brilliant. Uh, among the seven nominations for the show this year are four for choreography, and that's the category of the show is dominated since it since the beginning. It's won it seven times, including a, a few years where it, where it actually won it twice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, of course, the show called So You Think You Can Dance, the dancing makes or breaks the show. Uh, yeah. Do you think the choreographers are also kind of the stars of the show in a way? Absolutely. I mean, for, for two reasons. The first reason, I think, is because, um, you know, take someone like Travis. As the, as the show, we, we are incredibly proud of him. You know, we, we saw Travis in season two when he came on, came on as like this little young squirt who had this amazing dance ability. I mean, phenomenal. He didn't win the show, but he went on to use the platform he was given to go on and become a choreographer, do these amazing pieces, and now be nominated for Emmys. So we feel, I think, on the show to be incredibly proud, you know, we're incredibly proud for being part of his journey, and we do feel as though we've been there every step of the way, which is amazing. Um, the second thing, I think, the choreographers are absolutely part of the show, and you know, we 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 always have great routines. Some you might like more than others. You know, it just depends on your taste. But there are moments on the show where um, the right choreographer, dancer, hair, makeup, music, lighting, all get together, and it doesn't happen very often. But every once in a while, it's just. It transcends to something beyond just dance. It becomes a piece of art. Because essentially what it does is it, it, give, it makes the hairs on your arm stand on end, and it gives you chills. And when I walk out onto the stage and the audience are watching, they, they're kind of crying or they forget to blink. And, and that's what a great piece of art should be able to do. A great piece of art should be able to physically move you. And it doesn't happen every week, but once in a blue moon, that's something that I have definitely learned from being on the show. I never thought dance could physically move me, and yet it has, and it does, and it continues to do so. Uh, one of the benefits of the show, uh, or, or maybe one of the challenges of, of being a host of the show, is, is that you don't have to play favorites. You get to sort of, you know, you don't have to, to criticize anyone's work. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, at the same time, you know, there must be times, as you've said, where, where a performance or a particular performance just, you know, just takes the house down with, with a great 
with a great performance. Is it hard to sometimes stay impartial when when sometimes there's like that amazing kind of moment? I think for me, it's always like I should just I should be in the moment. If something really moves me, it moves me, and I'm going to say that. If if I'm really enthusiastic about it, I'm going to say it. I'm not going to say something if I don't like a piece. I'm not going to say that. I'll find something else to say about it. Um, as I see it, my job is to encourage the dancers as much as I possibly can and to also make sure the judging is fair too. You know, the judges can't turn around one week and say, oh, but you added your own style to that. When to somebody else, they might turn around and go, but you didn't put the style of the dance. You know, I'll call them out. I will kind of, you know, I will stand there or I'll say, you know, but this is the first week that these guys have been together. So, you know, everybody else has been together for the past six weeks, so of course the chemistry is going to be a little, you know, I'm kind of, as I see it, I'm kind of big sister, cheerleader, I'm the person who, you know, sometimes when the judges are criticizing something, although it always tends to be constructive criticism, I'm the one who's like, come on, we've got this, let's do it, you know. Um, so it's not, it's not hard to be impartial, and to be honest, I don't want to be completely impartial because I think that's boring. I think, uh, my role is more like the everyman. If you enjoyed it sitting at home on your couch, then I've probably enjoyed it too, you know. So I'm going to rave about it, but I won't rave about it in a technical way because I don't know my pirouettes from my pod yards. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, Even you've been after doing the show time. for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, you've been doing the show now for for all, all these uh, years, uh, seven years now, ten seasons almost. Um, you know, are are you able to settle into a routine on the show at this point? Is it is it real, relatively old hat almost, or is it still does it still take you by surprise week after week? Yeah, it's never hot, old hat. I have to say, I think also because we're live and you never know quite what's going to happen. So of course, adrenaline goes, and it's always exciting. Uh, I think every year they, they lift the standard, the choreographers and the dancers, they become, they do something new and something different, you know, what we seem to be seeing a lot of right now is, um, we seem to be seeing people be really creative with their music and genre choices, so for instance the other day Fiction and Amy did a routine to Let's Get It On, and it was like a hip hop routine, and it was really cute, you know, I like it when you, you either amalgamate two styles of dance together or you take a really surprising piece of music with a, a very different style and you put the two together. I think then people um, are, are constantly surprised and delighted, you know. We're an entertainment show. We want people to be entertained. And it's not enough to go, okay, that's another great hip-hop routine to another great hip-hop track. We've kind of seen it before. I think... I think we are we do constantly challenge ourselves with new ideas and and how can we make it fresh while still keeping the show that everybody loves. Now a, a live show must have any number of uh, of challenges to to keep it going smoothly and on time and all that. Uh, you know you know at home the viewer might not see all of that. You know all the challenges to it. Is there anything in particular about it that that is challenging that maybe you know is if, it's, if you're doing it right, is not being uh, noticed by the people at home? You've, you've absolutely summed it up there in the question. There's lots of challenges, but I don't want you to see any of them. That's exactly it. That's the biggest challenge of all, is making it look, making it look easy. The, the best analogy I can possibly give you, it should look like a swan gliding across water. That's what it should look like, but I'm paddling furiously underneath, you know? And, and for me, it's always in the prep. For me, it's, um, you know, know your backstories, know where you've got to be standing, know who's with you, know when to send them off, know what camera I'm on, lights, uh, uh, timings, all that kind of stuff. You, you prep it and you rehearse it so that when you're actually in the moment, you're in the moment and you let it all go. And then it becomes like it's got this fluidity to it and because you're in the moment, you're actually listening to what the person's saying rather than worrying about the next thing that's going to happen because you know um, and so then the right question comes which is what everybody's sitting at home watching that's the question that they want to ask and you know it, like it should feel as though there's a real ease to it and it does I think that after 10 seasons we do feel very much like it's a family and I feel like my inner goofball can come out more and more each 
season because I'm just a bit, I think I was probably holding it back a bit at first and now I'm just like, ah, I'm, just like, I'm at home with my family. It's like kick off my shoes, have a joke, do a bit of a silly dance, <laughs> you know, it's all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, there are challenges. But I remember the one time we were live on TV and I said to Nigel, we'd just come out of commercial break, and I said to Nigel, who's going home? We were live and he went, no one's going home this week, Kat. Can you imagine? I've got like probably seven minutes left of the show, and I don't know what is it. So we just made it up as we went along. So I went, okay. So what do you want to do? And he went, I'd like to see the dancers dance again. I went, okay. Do we have the music waiting? And someone threw my ear, went, yes. And I went, okay. So first to start, we just made it up as as, as we went along. And I'm sure Nigel just does it now, just just because he he's like, yeah, you can cope with it. You're fine. <laughs> Uh, among your uh, fellow nominees for the Emmys this year are Betty White and Heidi Klum, which actually makes this the first time in this category that there have been three women nominated. Uh, do you think you know, we'll see the women outnumber the men sometime soon? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I've got no idea. I mean, listen, it's one of those categories where it could kind of go to anyone. Tom is great. He won it last year. The year before, we shared the Critics' Choice Award, so it was a bit, a bit like a bad divorce. He had the award during the week. I had it at weekends. Um, but he's got his Emmy now, so if I have to share it with him again, I'm not going to be. Ha I'm going to, I'm going to take it with me. Um, but I really think Ryan should get one too. You know, he's done the biggest reality show, not just on TV, but in the world. So I, I, listen, it's one of those things where I welcome. I think all of the hosts in my category are amazing, and um, just to even be in the same room as Betty White is kind of unbelievable for me. You know, coming back from back home in England from a small town to even go to the Emmys, let alone be nominated and be nominated with the likes of Betty White, I can't believe it. Yeah, and Betty White, uh, for the second time, you're nominated against her. I mean, the, the idea in anyone's career that you know, you, if someone had told you. In 2006, when you started, you know, in a few years you'll be nominated in a category at the Emmys against Betty White. What would you have said? I think I might have imploded. <laughs> I think I might have actually exploded and just been left and just been kind of like cracked up pieces on the floor. I think the excitement level would have just been too much for me. So, uh, I, was just, I mean, listen, it's very, very, very exciting. I'm looking forward to picking out jewellery and a, and, a, and, a, and a frock. I'm not going to go for the same thing. Last year I did like a fishtail thing and it was a nightmare. When, you, when I needed to pee, it was an absolute nightmare because I had to unzip it to get in and out of it. I couldn't just lift it. So I had to walk out of the, the bathroom and the Downton Abbey girls had to zip me back up again. So there was definitely a sense of British camaraderie. <laughs> And, and the Downton Abbey women, I'm sure, are very experienced at getting into and out of complicated uh, dresses. Can you, exactly. Can you imagine? Particularly the maids. They're very good at the zip up and zip down. But um, no, it was, it, was, it was nice to see them, and thank goodness they were there. Otherwise, it could have been a disaster. Now, uh, speaking of picking things out, uh, as, a, as a nominated host, you have to submit a sample episode to, to Emmy judges of your best work from last season. Uh, can you tell us what episode you submitted? You know what? I hold on a second. What episode did I submit? Top eight. It was the top eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just comparing there. It was the top. You know what? I think it, it was the episode where uh, Jesse Tyler Ferguson was on the panel, who I love. And he's such an uber fan of the show. So there was lots of nice dynamics and improvisations between him and I, and um, he just always brings such a lovely feel to the judging panel and just changes up the dynamics so much, and he's so witty and funny, um, but it was kind of a perfect one. The, the, the kids were amazing on it too. I don't think I dropped a mic or fell over or anything like that, so it was kind of one of those good ones where it was like, okay, it's chemistry and it's fun and it's off the cuff, so that's why I went for that one. Well, uh, fingers crossed about, about you know, that episode, the you know potentially winning for that episode. I mean, last season on So You Think You Can Dance, there was a a male and a female winner of the show. So maybe at the Emmys, who knows? You you and 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 one of your other nominees can can get your own trophy, both of you. Yeah, but you know what? It's all all about who gets up to the podium first. 
I'm taking I'm taking off my shoes and tucking my skirt into my knickers and I'm just going to run for it. <laughs> it's definitely definitely good to choose a dress for running and and just get like running shoes underneath, you know, so that you know. I'm not proud. I'm all <laughs> I'm not proud. <laughs> Well, uh, best of luck at the Emmys, uh, uh, and best of luck on, on the rest of this season of So You Think You Can Dance, and the next hundred, of course, which I'm sure you will do. Uh, of course. It, it, I intend to be the Betty White of the next however many the Emmys, yeah. Absolutely, and she's still going strong, and she shows no signs of stopping, and, and I, I'm sure the same will be true of you. Oh, thank you. Right, have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.